Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you all back to the 2021 version of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project. Thank you all so very much for being with me today and every day on this artistic journey we are taking together. And hopefully you will have some fun and learn a few tips and uh, I will learn from you and we will have a warm, wonderful community together. Thank you for being here. Um, a couple of notes real quickly before we get started. Um, some of you have been asking about how to do Instagram, so I will have another tutorial up for you guys for this year uh, in the next couple of days, I hope. And so don't fret about that. And then you can always upload uh, the ones that you haven't been able to upload so far. And uh, the next thing I wanted to let you guys know is that um, many of you really are loving the Zia creation ones. And this is the issue I had last year was that the videos got so long that they were impossible for me to keep up with because um, I want you to understand that for each uh, two hour video that I create, that I go through that video four to five times at least in editing. And so two, four, six, eight hours for editing plus the two hours, then I'm at 10 hours. <laughs> and I'm old. So understand. So I'm going to try to compromise today and give you a little color with hopefully very little effort. And uh, we're going to have some fun with some easy, beautiful tangles today. Okay. So what I have here are some watercolors. Now I'm intimidated because uh, at least two of you have said something about doing watercolor yourself. And, and I need to let you all know that what I know about watercolor is not much. It's just my personal experience and some videos that I've seen here on YouTube about watercolor. I have not practiced it much. I know how to apply it to my tile, but I don't know a lot about watercolor. So if I give advice or tips or say something that is incorrect, feel free to very lovingly correct me in comments and I will bow to your expertise because I am not an expert, okay? But uh, I still like to paint. So most people have some watercolors and even if all you have is the little kid set, this will work, okay? You can also use water-based markers for what we're going to do today, but I think for what I want, I'm going to get the smoothest um, kind of a blend. Uh, I'm going to be using a, uh, another Zendala tile. This is an original one, so it's off-white, yeah? an original Zentangle Zendala tile. It's just something and you can, you can, I think it's, is it four inches across, six inches across? I'm not sure. Uh, you'd have to look it up. But um, if you want to use something like this and you don't have a tile from Zentangle, that's fine. Use hot press watercolor paper if you can. And if you can't even find that, cold press watercolor paper is a little rough to draw on, but you're still going to get beautiful results with that. So just use whatever you have available, okay? So what I'm going to teach you today, today's tangle is called Arium. It is by my fellow classmate, CZT32 Hiroko Matsuo. She is from Japan and she is a wonderful friend and um, just a wonderful, amazing artist. And so she has a bunch of patterns out already on Tango Patterns. And her last one, Arium, is it, she did a beautiful Zendala uh, seascape with it. And oh, I just want to try something like that. So we're going to try to do a seascape. I don't know if it's going to work. And I'm going to kind of mimic, try to, try to, uh, I'm not going to get close to what she did. Let's face it. She's amazing. So check out this Zendala that I'm talking about on Tango Patterns and see how beautiful it is. We're going to have a lot of fun with this today. So what I did first was I got out my Arteza watercolors. I have the, um, the 60 set watercolor, premium watercolors. They have beautiful colors. Now these are the wet kind that come in the little tubes and uh, you open them up. Hopefully this isn't one of the messy ones. And and you've got this situation in here and they're wet and you squeeze them out and you mix them with water and voila, watercolor. 
So I've tried a lot of watercolor, both dry and wet, and uh, you guys know how I feel about my Inktense pencils. But because they are expensive and hard to get, I thought this year I would um, uh, bow to my need to include everyone and just use regular watercolors. Now, if you want some watercolors, these are awesome, at least for my untutored uh, use. Uh, these are awesome. And what I am finding about the Arteza brand is that their colors are highly water soluble, highly blendable, and really vibrant. So if you want a low cost um, set of really nice uh, watercolors, then this is a good brand to get, okay? From a, an untutored, <laughs> non-expert, that's my opinion. Okay, all right. By the way, that reminds me, I wanted to mention to you guys also, um, I saw a video here on YouTube that was um, a review of an Amazon Basics that has come out. They're, they have come out with their own brand of colored pencils called Amazon Basics Colored Pencils, right? Or premium or artist grade, whatever they're called. And so this reviewer was comparing them to Prismacolors, which is, which is one of the kinds I have. I have a variety now. Um, and really was wowed by them. Now they they weren't promising anything like archival or or color fast or you know all of the stuff that we look for in high quality artist grade materials. But bang for buck and how they look and feel and all of that, she was really pleased and absolutely recommended them. So if you want a a decent set of um, colored pencils that are um, comparable to Prismacolor, then uh, go for it. Check out the Amazon Basics brand. All right. I'm going to try to update my de update my influencers page on Amazon and try to get all of the stuff here that I use on this channel on there so that you guys can easily find that. <laughs> but it's not going to be today. All right. So I narrowed down my color choices to three here. Since I want to do a seascape, I uh, have an Aegean blue, and that is this color here. I have a thalo blue, or a thalo blue, thalo blue, <laughs> yeah, I know. And that is this one, one of my favorites. I love the just ever so slight hints of green in that. It's just really rich. And uh, this one is cerulean blue, and that's very blue-green, like, you know, Caribbean sea. Uh, something gorgeous like that. And so I'm going to choose, uh, I think I'm going to start with the cerulean and maybe use some uh, phthalo blue as a mixture, and we'll see where we get. I, I may use the Aegean to sort of um, dark down some spots, or I may just, you know... <laughs> make it easy on myself. We'll see. So I'm just going to work with this tile on top of my um, paper here so I don't mess anything up too much. Now, I'm not promising I'm going to get anything I like on this, but we're going to give it a try, okay? What, what Hiroko had done on her tile was left a highlighted spot, or either a lighter spot, somewhere as a circle, somewhere in the upper quadrant, and then uh, gradually got darker as she went below. Now, I don't promise that I'm going to be able to accomplish that. I think I changed my mind. I think I'm going to go with the follow first, and I'm going to work dark to light. This may or may not be a good idea. I'm going to wet, uh, I'm going to squeeze out some water with my aqua brush or my water brush here so that this tile area is wet. And then I'm going to uh, do my aqua brush version of watercolor. And you watercolor people, don't, don't, don't talk about me behind my back. This is just my way. And remember, I have to work from my bed, so I have to have on the mobile uh, opportunities here. <laughs> so I love this thalo blue. It's beautiful. It's got really rich, deep colors. And you're gonna get some some uh, you're gonna get some flex on here if you're using uh, watercolor paper of any kind. You're gonna get some of that grain from your watercolor paper. And so I'm just going to so, sort of move from dark and then just blend it forward a little bit. I'm gonna let some of it be darker than others. I'm gonna let it sort of be its own thing. If it's got streaks, it's gonna be fine. 
I'm not asking for perfection here. I just want something fun. Now, if you're worried about getting into your highlighted area, one thing you can do uh, is take your white Prismacolor and um, cover that with, with uh, the wax base uh, pencil, and that will, um, that's really going to help you um, keep your highlight clean. Uh, I think I'm going to trust myself to try not to mess this up too much. I love aqua brushes because they allow me to work with wet media uh, without too big a mess. Just a minute. All done. Very good. For 40 minutes? Um, no. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to finish up here quickly. Now, uh, I'm going to leave this area the way it is for now. Um, I may come in, probably will come in, and soften this area just a little bit. And I want to work in another color here. And I want to remind myself here not to scrub too hard because we are, are abrading the, the tooth of the paper when we do that. And we want our paper to be nice and smooth. All right. So Mari's angry. And of course it has to do with school. I don't want cerulean. What do I want? Yes, I do want cerulean. It just doesn't look the same, does it? Anyway, I like this sort of blue-green hint it has. I'm just going to put some in. Adding some water. Squeezing as I go. And I'll put some more of this where it's wet. And we'll sort of put a little gradient here of... I've gotten too much here. I'll push that back down.
here. Feel free to be plentiful with the water on these tiles. They're very, very good with taking water. And your hot press should do, should do fairly well, although probably not quite as well as these. But I have no doubt that whatever tools you have, you will make something beautiful. All right, that's lovely, I think. So this that I'm using here, this is my Canson mixed media uh, water or um, mixed media sketch pad, and um, I use the what is this seven by ten or no, it's not. I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me. And I lost the lid to my Thalo glue, so I have to put that in a bag. All right. Let me work this. Just a little more. All water, just pure water, and all I'm doing is taking what's on the edge and pulling it up. There's really nothing on my brush. There may be a slight bit of blue. And I'm just taking a nice damp brush and working these edges just a little bit so it'll be nice and smooth. Until we get into us, until we get into a nice white middle, yeah. And maybe come down here. I don't really mind if there are these uh, ink lines here too much because sometimes that makes uh, a fun thing for tangling. But uh, even if I leave it here, once by the time we have done whatever we're doing, I can smooth this out with a white Prismacolor very easily so that you don't see the line. So, okay, so this is all of the coloring I am going to do today. Let's dry this tile off and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so this is what I ended up with once I dried it and I just used an old hair dryer. It was the same one I used in the 80s when I lived in Germany. Now you know how old I am. All right, so I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out, and I think we're going to have some fun here. Uh, I don't know what angle I'm going to do this with. I'm kind of thinking like so, maybe, maybe like this. We'll see. Maybe this is a sky thing. <laughs> anyway, all right. I'm going to use my PN to draw. But I'm thinking about using a different color. And the reason I chose a PN or am choosing a PN is because um, the PNs with the plastic nib are, are better to work over um, something you've done where you have a residue. You'll have a bit of a watercolor residue on your, on your surface. And uh, so the PNs handle that a little better than the zero ones, at least in my experience. And so, you know, of course you can use whatever you want. But what I'm looking for is my dark blue PN. So I'm using a PN and I don't know if you can tell with the light here, but this is a, a dark blue color. And uh, you'll be able to tell once I get started. It will just, as, as we want to see, we want to see the lines, but uh, we also want them to blend with the background, right? So that's kind of where I'm at. Let me shift this light just a little bit. Let's see if we can, ooh, that's better for me anyway. Hopefully that's okay for you guys. If I set this too close to the camera, then it, then it bleeds out on one side, so I have to be careful. All right. Okay, so uh, sorry about all of that. I seem to be more rambling than ever today. So um, let's get started with our tile. We are going to do a tangle called Arium today. And Arium is uh, based on the word aquarium and uh, a Japanese word, and I forget, uh, uh, oh, for a type of seaweed. And uh, she made that into Arium. So what you're going to do, so simple, so simple. Let me actually step this out where you can see a little bit better and then we'll get over there. Arium is done by making these loops or these um, 
wavy lines. You can make as many or as few as you want, like this, right? And then she she has these uh, sort of elongated um, holes in them, but you don't have to put those. And just do them all willy-nilly, wherever you want, use them or don't. And then the next thing to do is to draw behind this, or imagine it. Put another one, again, make it whatever you want it to be, however large you want it to be. Add your little, your little thingies or not, just whatever you want. You could also ink these, yeah, if that's the look you like. And then you just add as many or as few as you want, yeah. Add in your little shapes. I'm wondering if these had points in the step out on the ends of these, and I can't remember, but um, yeah. So um, what are the possibilities with this? Uh, so many, actually. So they make fun little C things, if that's what you want to do with them. Um, you could also... draw um, these very large and then make them see-through to show something behind. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So this is what we've kind of got to work with. This is Arium. And I'm also going to use a couple of others. Probably, um, let's just find out. So I think, actually, I do want to start with another one, and I'm going to put in squid. And I'm going to do that by starting with some little inked orbs. I like to ink mine and then dot in some jelly roll. You all know how I am. We're just going to make a little cluster of these in the middle. Yeah, and then uh, we're going to make these sort of wavy lines out and put some little, I, I have trouble with these lines, so don't talk about me. There you go, like that. Um, draw some more in here. And it does not matter that these are so, so wiggly. If, if, the, if your lines wiggle, then make that part of what you're doing. I'm just filling this in with little radiating lines. At, oh, goodness. I promise I'm not doing that on purpose. It's just how it goes sometimes. Especially when I'm not putting much weight on there. So something like that. I'm just going to make myself happy with these. So you put a couple in there first. Oops. And then I can take another one and I can come out here and I can go behind Now you can decorate the insides with of these any way you want. But but doing it in this way sort of gives a tiny bit of movement, maybe. And again, this is uh, doubt this is the way it is in the step out. This is just my, my thing. When I add extra tangles that I'm not stepping out for you, I do my thing. You do your thing. 
goodness. I think I do step this tangle out in my dingbat series someplace. Okay, so where these come across, I'm gonna fill this in with some little orbs and I'm gonna dot with light here after a bit with Jelly Roll. And put some more of these little inked orbs in. If they're too small, I leave the middle the way it is because I'm going to dot in Jelly Roll anyway. It's not going to matter. And these little orbs can be whatever you want them to be as they come out. I like to stick them to the sides. <laughs> makes, makes them look like they're trapped. You know, make up a fun scenario for yourself. Just do it how you want. I may not ink these. No, I probably will. Remember that jelly roll over over color or dark is is a is a breaker. It it just makes it. Alright, so I'm gonna put a couple more here. I'm not gonna make this into a big deal. And it's not my intention to do something particularly hard today. In fact, it's my intention to try to um, find a way to do both. Both Zia's and, um, and um, not ridiculously long videos for myself. So we're going to find out if we can accomplish that today. Just by not adding too much extra Cindy. Just once. I'd like it to go where I want it to go. Again, I'm embracing. I'm embracing my deckled lines. Thank you, Sue Reynolds. That that comment changed the way I, I look at my lines. My deckled lines. They're definitely deckly. Deckled is a term um, that crafters use to describe a uh, paper um, cut in uh, decorative ways along the edges. If you've ever seen, uh, like the um, wedding invitations, you know, that have the sort of uh, stringy ends on the paper and that kind of, that's deckled. It's a form of deckled, I guess. I have some deckled scissors and I have a deckled... Um, ruler which is really cool you it's a really sturdy three-sided ruler um and it um you can tear paper with it a lot and it has deckled sides with different patterns on it it's not ultra effective but you know it'll work in a pinch all right i'm gonna add a few more of these down here river is snoring up a storm right now She likes her naps. Okay, so now remember, I know this is dark down here, but um, we're gonna lighten that up with some jelly roll and some white charcoal pencil, and it's gonna be fabulous. Just trust me. And also, make sure your paper is completely dry before you start drawing on it. That will really tear the tooth up. Okay, so yes, I'm intentionally leaving some blank and not, don't, don't ask me, eventually there will be some rhyme to my reason, maybe. So now, Arium, I'm going to add some of that coming out from behind this, this, um, whatever this is called, squid. And, uh, so I'm going to start, let's see, I think I'll start coming from over here, and I think I want to make mine kind of long and wispy, and we'll just pretend that goes like this, and then I think I'll put some of these little holes in there, and for now, I think I'll leave them blank, 
I'll try to move those with the thing. Let's see what else we can do with this. Let's see if we can bring this down. Yep, that'll be good. Might make these a little bigger. We'll see. Once again, you don't have to add these if you don't want to. It's one of those entirely up to you things. Um... I think this is such a lovely, simple thing to do. I think I'll come out here. You know, and, it, and the waviness of the lines goes with the waviness in the water. Now, again, yours doesn't have to be water for me. This could be an alien sky. I don't know. That's just where I went with it. What else can we do here? Uh, I think I'll put one more smaller one and shading will make a huge difference for this okay so I want to put one more thing in there maybe some fescue fescue would be fun for this I think let's see I think I'm gonna leave that I want to put one more interesting thing. Maybe I'll put in another one of these. Show you how it's really supposed to be. Sort of supposed to be. I don't know, that one looks weird. It's okay though. So I'm gonna start putting in some fescue and if something else occurs to me, I'm gonna let that go too. Mooka would probably work in here. Um, Simba says, hey, Lynn Gotham, I hope you're doing okay, sweet girl. I've got so many of you guys to say hi to. I need to be more organized for that. Because you guys know how my memory is. <laughs> So that already livens things up and adds a lot more movement, doesn't it? And uh, let's put some of these out here. Actually, this one wants to be a mooka. We're going to do a mooka, similar mooka pattern, similar to mooka pattern here soon. I really like it. Some of you probably already know what I'm talking about. But no hinting. You don't get to know what we're doing the day before, bud. Mostly because I don't know what we're doing the day before. And the nice thing about fescue is you can draw over other stuff. And it still looks right. All right. Let's put some more of this this escaping mooka here. Oh, oh, Simba. Simba's moving. Okay. We're settled now. That nap is sounding good. My intention is to keep these stalks really thin. Whether or not I am able to accomplish this, I don't know. And you could use any tangle here, any tangle here that you want. 
Uh, any really any organic pattern is going to work in here really well. Remember, an organic pattern isn't just the ones that are, are related to earth. It's something that grows on itself, like arium would be, is very, um, is very, and all of these really are very organic because you can add them to other things. You can, they can stand on their own. They can grow on their own. They can be single. I mean, they, it's just the, the possibilities with them are endless. I do love my fescue, guys. It's such a nice way to dress something up. I'm gonna have to turn this over and go the other way because I'm I'm definitely <laughs> I'm definitely leaning to the left here. You know what? This one needs to have a little bloomer in it. <laughs> There you go. There you go. See how simply that happens? <laughs> so unlike yesterday in harp, I am intentionally turning these in a variety of directions. At least that's, that's my intention. What I end up with, I do not know. And so I want these to look like they're reaching for the moon or the sky or whatever this is. All right, now, what are we going to do with this? It's very dark on one side. How are we going to lighten that up? Well, I'm going to show you. We're going to need our graphite pencil or a black colored pencil would be a very good choice there. Um... That will probably work better in this instance. I'm going to pull out my polychromos black. Um, also, what do we want? We want our number 10 jelly roll. This is a jelly roll. And the number 10 is the one that flows really nice. It's the big nibbed one. And where is my number 5 jelly roll? should be in here too, but it's not. All right, so we'll see where we get. And I also need my torch on. All right. So let's look at this. What can we do to really enhance this? So the jelly roll is going to be a big one. I'm going to be dotting that in all over where these orbs are. Uh, that's really going to brighten this area up. But before we do that, I want to add shading. And you ask, why shading? It's so dark already. Well, because it's so dark, it's going to work better. Anywhere you're overlapping, Stroke some in. You can use a black colored pencil, but remember, you can't. You while you can do some blending with it, you can't do that like you can with pencil. So, if you're unsure of that, then go ahead and use your pencil so you know. And we're just adding a little bit of depth here, right, so that we can enhance that that uh, drawing behind thing. When I get up here in the light, I may change and use my graphite pencil. I think. Hi, baby. What's up? I told Dylan that he could come over. Okay, that's fine. Make sure he's quiet when he comes in. So, um, all I'm doing is is bringing color into these places where they look like they're overlapping. And I'm using my black colored pencil in particular in the areas where, where I've got this darkness. Because we need it to be darker than that. And uh, you'll be surprised how cool this looks when we put in the jelly roll. So again, just adding some color where, where you've got some overlapping happening. Let's see, I think I got most of my spots here. You can use graphite and black pencil together if you want. I frequently do when I'm wanting a good, nice dark shade. All right. All right, let's blend that a little. Oh, no, first, I'm going to add some graphite on the arium that is behind 
So um, every one of these that we added in that looks like it overlaps another one, this is gonna be important to making this tangle really pop out, okay? So anywhere you've got that overlapping, you're gonna to wanna to put graphite down, okay? Also where you've got the mucus stalks coming out, right? And anywhere where those overlap, where here we've got fescue, so that's not a big deal. All right. Just a little bit. Okay, and here we've got some more overlapping area. There we go. And then here where I've got uh, the squid, the, is this squid? Why can't I think today? Anyway, where these two overlap, I definitely want to put graphite down and we'll probably add black pencil to that. Let's grab the tortillon or the paper stump, whatever you got, and blend some of this and see where we're at. It's usually hard to tell until you've got some blended. And so you can see here, hopefully, let's zoom. Well, you can see the shine, can't you? Which is why I'm gonna put some black pencil over that. And again, don't worry about how dark that is. If you've got yours as dark as mine or darker, it's gonna be okay, hopefully. And if it's not, it'll be another step on our artistic journey. We will have learned not to use dark color like that. It'll be all right. And I promise you it's gonna be fine. Unless you're really darker than me, in which case, I don't know. All right, so we've got some good shading here between our ariums. I have, have the itch to play with this tangle a lot more. All right, so I don't think I've got any more mooka, although I could add some here somewhere. And I might, I might. All right, so let's take, let's see, let me get my black pencil. I wanna do this just a little bit to dull that shine. Try to keep that blended a little bit. There. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to move this a second and look at it. Just a second. Okay. So now I'm going to need my white Prismacolor. There it is. Oh, it, it's sad. It's been used a lot lately. It needs a sharpen. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Isn't that nice? That's a sharp pencil. Okay. So uh, first, I am going to go through here and decide where I want highlights on these, these things. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is put this at the apex of these uh, squids to brighten that up. I need a little bit more shading over here. And I will put just a tiny bit here. Maybe a little bit here. I will probably come in with another colored pencil, a blue one or a green one maybe, to do some more blending with these stalks. But already you can see 
that lightens this up tremendously, okay? So we've got that there. I'm going to put some more here. Maybe a little bit down here. We'll see. Um, don't ask me why on that one. Just because I want to. It's my art and I can. Sometimes I make mistakes when I tell you guys to do stuff. You should, you should take my advice with caution, people. Take it with caution. I'm good with the Zentangle stuff. The rest of it's just, you know, make it up as you go. <laughs> okay, so on Arium, what could I do highlight-wise to sort of pop this out is my question to myself. Um, you know, you could, you know, white these in, make those pop out a little bit. You could also do that with Jelly Roll. This is why you need a white Prismacolor in your toolkit. Whatever pencils you like, nothing covers and nothing is brighter than a white Prisma. That's, that's a good question for those Amazon Basic ones, isn't it? To review those is to see how good their white is. Because for... Um, colored pencil artists of whatever kind of pencils you use, the white prismas are, are part of it. Now look at here. Um, this, I, all of the blank ones, I have, I have added a little white color to. Look at here. <laughs> and that has popped these little orbs right off, right? Giving us a lot of interest down here. Not all white colored pencils are going to give you this result. This is why we preach about that. Well, okay, I'm going to come down here and do these guys. Oh, yeah. Have to touch that up with ink. Put a little bit of a highlight on these Mooka over here. And I may still add in a few. Now, I think I want to grab a blue pencil or maybe a purple one. I think I'm going to use my violet. My violet. And see if I can... Add a little more interest here in some of these color-wise. Just by adding a tiny bit of violet into the shading here and there. Now again, you don't have to do anything I do. And if I what I do is, is stupid, don't do it. It happens. It happens. I'm just going to touch in enough that you that you feel the the hue and in spots like this you get really interesting color gradients and mixes when you blend And I can come back through here, of course, with my white Prismacolor. I go over very gently because I understand that the more you go over with a white Prismacolor, the more um, what you what is called burnishing you do. Uh, burnishing is when you've got so much um, uh, pencil down that, that it, the paper can no longer take anymore. And you get this very slick, um, polished look over your pencils, and that's not a bad thing, but if you are blending pencil, you want lots of layers, of course, and um, yeah, so if you push down too hard to begin with, then you've lost your opportunity to add more. There we go. Now, usually I use little circles, but in this, in this instance where I'm covering a long, large area, I'm gonna just do it like this. 
I'm going to leave that right there. So I'm just really doing tips with, with a bit of a darker color that will go with my C color, but um, still show up, if that makes sense to you guys. All right, I think I will go over this just a little bit. All right, so we've got a little violet in here, and now I want to use, let me, I'm going to move this and look at it again. Hmm. Sorry, right, I've got sun coming in the window and my light over the other side, and it's hard for me to get rid of the glare. Now, um, what else? I have a peacock green that I could use that would really go well with this, but I'm not sure I want something that dark here. I'm sort of looking at my Verithins. You guys know these from last year. This is a, a Prismacolor Verithin. It is sort of like my F pencil. It's a harder, the the uh, pencil barrel is hard, or the um, color is, pigment is harder in a harder core than the regular pr Prismacolors, which are really buttery smooth. And these are, are not as opaque. These are more transparent. And so for Zentangle art, that, that can be a really interesting, cool thing. And so, you know, I just like to play. I love my purples and greens. I think it's just the most amazing color combination ever. All right. Are we done barking now, little girl? All right. Okay. I'm talking to my peeps again. Go away. Both of you. All of you. All of you. Just kidding. I love you. I'll be back. Almost done, guys. I'm almost done. Okay, so I'm going to... All right. So uh, I have used this uh, True Green, which is a kind of a green that, that is very neutral, meaning that it doesn't uh, have more or less blue or green or yellow in it. You know, it's sort of in between. And so... I'm just going to add hints of this here and there to sort of mix with my violet and um, make it interesting. Guys, no talking. Thank you. And so I think I'm also going to come over here in this area with my um, Arium. And I'm just going to green these up just a little bit by using this Verithin is very transparent. It's still going to show my color from underneath. No talking. Go outside, boys. Thank you. All right. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to green this arium up a little bit. Give it some interest. In these areas where it has some light naturally from what we did with the paint, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to probably come through with my Prismacolor and lighten those a little bit just to give a little bit of color interest here. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. And these are going to look, of course, slightly different because we don't have the, the amount of pigment here that we do on the others. And these are going to be able to sort of shine on their own. And of course, you can color these, these little holes in or leave those off. I think we went over this. <laughs> All right. You can use your colored pencil with your graphite pencil. I think I said that too. I'm starting to get repetitive. It's because I keep getting interrupted. <laughs> It's okay, guys. It's okay. Say hi to the people, guys. Teenagers, what are you going to do? They probably went outside. Get away from me, because I'm mean. I keep yelling at them. No talking. They'll get over it. Hopefully. Yeah. Now, I'm really going to press a little bit harder down here. This is going to give us an interesting um, mix. All right. Uh, uh. 
So with the same uh, with the same basic color we have and and adding just a few colored pencils here and there, we have added a whole lot of interest to this. All right. Now what I'm going to do is uh, is really make this pop out. So uh, let me quickly touch up just one or two things with my ink. Um, guys, if you're if you um, if you uh, are working over colored pencil, use your PN if you have one, and be careful. Don't push down. Uh, you're you don't want to cause the wax to push up into the barrel of your pen. So if you're going to do something like this, that's over colored pencil, be really careful to just lay it on top. Okay. And don't push down too hard. All right. Now. Now the magic part. Jelly roll. I love my jelly rolls. Jelly rolls are so much fun, aren't they? Okay. So I'm going to go through here with this and I'm going to pop a highlight in these black ones and in these white ones. If your jelly roll isn't uh, coming out, if the ink isn't coming out, try tapping it gently. Why I love working over colored backgrounds because of this effect here. It all just comes to life. Isn't this fun? Okay, I haven't gotten to editing, but this wasn't so bad, was it? The drawing didn't take long. That hap that helps. Okay. Mari has a friend over. They're outside on the trampoline. It gets kind of crazy out there. Now I've got these dark ones down here on the bottom. Let's see if we can let's see if I can see them well enough to get them here. If you're going to do this, take your time. It's easy to get out of control. I'm just tapping a little dot onto each one of these darker ones so that they are not lost completely. There. Now we're getting there. Now we're getting there. All right. That's pretty. What do you think? Very nice. Yeah. Nothing like, uh, nothing beautiful like Hiroko's. Please go look at hers. All right, guys, this is where I'm going to leave you today. I hope you have enjoyed coloring and painting and and making something pretty. If you um, if you have any questions or comments, please, please leave them for me. And don't forget to post your art on Instagram. I am making an Instagram tutorial right after I get done with this video. So expect that soon, okay? All right, guys, thanks for being here and I'm gonna see you tomorrow.